witnesses you have, the better. And we have lots of witnesses, eyewitnesses for um, for the New Testament uh, books, for the Gospels in particular. So, so eyewitnesses bring credibility to a, to a narrative. They saw the events that happened with their own eyes, uh, and so they know what happened. And and when we believe other credible eyewitnesses, right? If 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 I don't know Grace and and then Fort Miller and uh, Angela saw what happened out on Fort Brook Road yesterday, and, and they all came in and told you the story, would y'all be like, that's not true. No, and they could, they could tell you, hey, come look. Come look at this car is up on the snow, right? So, so uh, we believe credible eyewitnesses when they tell us something happened. Why not believe these credible? Eyewitnesses. There must be something else going on there. Um, so write down some scriptures whereby the authors and their counterparts describe how they were eyewitnesses of certain events. What scriptures would you have? Yeah. Yeah. Acts 2.32, and what does it say there? Yep. Good. What else? There are lots of them. Quentin? Not actually. I want to hear it. Yep. Oh. One of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus came to me in the morning, beginning from the baptism and until the day that he was taken up from us, one of these men was the same as the Lord Jesus was born from the dead. Right. So, so what that's basically saying is that all of the disciples saw all of Jesus' ministry, including his resurrection. Now, Judas is gone, literally, right? Would have been even if he wouldn't have taken his life, he would have been gone as as a disciple, as an apostle. They're choosing a new apostle, and he has to have he has to be the same thing. He has to be a credible eyewitness to be an apostle. Uh, another one is in John nineteen, also in John twenty one. He says something similar, but just after the the account of the 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 crucifixion, John, who never names himself in this uh, gospel, maybe you remember that, basically says the man who's writing this thought. I know it's true, because I saw it. Uh, Paul, when he is in front of Agrippa uh, and Festus, making his case that he hadn't broken Jewish law in the temple, starts talking about Jesus and says, these things weren't done in a corner. This wasn't a secret. This was a very public life that Jesus led. And his death and his resurrection were known by by uh, by Agrippa, by Festus, uh, and and so uh, there were many eyewitnesses. Okay, let's look at equip number one. Uh, who are considered to be some of the key eyewitnesses in the New Testament? Peter, Paul, and James. Peter, Paul, John. Who else? Mary Magdalene. Mary, the mother of James or Jesus. Okay. And Jesus. I mean, not just James. Mother of both Jesus. Jesus. Mary, the mother of Jesus, and Mary, the mother of all Jesus. Who else? The writer of Hebrews. The author of Hebrews. Uh, another one is, is two James. There are two Jameses. One is James, the brother of John, the sons of Zebedee, the sons of Thunder. Of the Sons of Thunder. He died early on, but he was an eyewitness. But there's another James who was Jesus' half brother. He's the one that wrote the book of James. Uh, and then Jude uh, is another half brother of Jesus who wrote the book of Jude. So did, did Jesus' brothers believe in him before his resurrection? No. No. Uh, if you 
remember from, from our study of John, they were pretty mercilessly dying uh, uh, there when he was going to the Feast of Tabernacles. And they're like, don't make a big show of yourself, Jesus, uh, and putting him down. Uh, it was the resurrection that convinced them that he was Messiah. And so they became believers and they became leaders in the church. James, his half-brother, was the leader of the Jerusalem church after Peter fled. So uh, all kinds of eyewitnesses. We could go on and on. Number two, describe whether Peter, Paul and Peter's defense of uh, their eyewitness testimonies was credible or defenseless. So uh, obviously your book says it's credible. Why is it credible? What makes it credible? Yeah, Ben. Because it's like the eyewitness. Yeah, they had nothing to gain, right? If you will, you lie if if you think you're going to gain from it. Don't lie to me, yeah, right? Uh, especially if it's dire straits. But if you have nothing to gain from the lie, like if it doesn't help you in any way, you're just going to tell the truth, right? And that's what they did. They had everything to lose, and and they did lose their lives for the uh, for the cause of the gospel, and nothing to win. Any other things that you wrote down? Yeah, and they and they spoke boldly. Uh, to people uh, who also knew but, but did not accept, like the governor, the truth. And the governor could have made life really bad for them, right? And, and in a lot of ways, uh, the leadership did. Uh, but they spoke boldly anyway. Uh, what is some evidence provided by Colin Hemer uh, that confirms Luke as a solid eyewitness? And, and I wrote too many to list, but what are some of them? Yeah. Yeah, he, he records numerous events. What else? What has been proven to tr be true in Luke's writings of, of the Gospel of Luke and Acts? What does he report that isn't even necessarily have anything to do with the Gospel, but that it's true? Yeah, topography, geography, leaders, languages, religious practices, customs, signs. There's a, um, okay, who is the governor, shoot, in Corinthians, that's mentioned, uh, of Corinth, and for, for years, um, scholars said, well, that's not true, because there never was a governor by that name, and then they did excavation of Corinth, and they found a, a, a road that was paid for by the governor, and there was a stone. Uh, that was commemorating his payments of the building of that road. His, and, you know, like when, when they have those little bricks and you can have your name put on the brick and whatever. And, and he was, it said, I, I wish I could remember his name, Governor of Corinth. And so the Bible, again, was proved to be true. And, and my assertion would be that what we can't prove yet is, is in the archaeology somewhere. It just maybe didn't survive. But so much we've been able to prove uh, about the, the Bible, about the New Testament. Number four, what sort of evaluation do historians give Luke and his recorded accounts in the books of Acts? Book of Acts. Okay, yeah, it's been found uh, accurate. But what do but what do non-Christian historians? about Luke. They what? Well, yeah, but they they accept the stuff that's not miraculous, right? They accept the mundane details, but not the miracles. 
Like, yeah, yeah, he was right about everything else. Yeah, he was a really, uh, you know, particular and, and detail-oriented historian. But when he gets into the, like, supernatural stuff, yeah, he kind of loses it. That shows bias. Because if you've got someone who is truthful down the line, and they, and they tell you about something else, but you don't like that something else and you don't want that something else to be true, then you discount it, right? Um, I don't know. I, and I'm going to I'm gonna embarrass somebody with that. I'm sorry. Um, so do you have trust, Gracie? Yeah. Like if I gave Gracie something to do, she would do it. And, and she wouldn't, you know, go out for donuts because she knows that, you know, while she's doing it or, or before she does it because she knows she's got to get right. So, so, but what if Gracie told me several things and I was like, yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And then she told me something that's true about me, but that I don't like about me, right? That's embarrassing about me or that, that that's ugly about me, right? I'd be like, that's not true. But she's trusting me. She's telling me the truth. I just don't want it to hear. And that's what happens with, with people who, historians, who don't want to hear the truth of the gospel. Um, but they're fine with uh, everything that's sort of mundane, that's sort of historical. Uh, okay. I was going to have you read, but I'm not sure that you can get it done before the end of the hour. And... Uh, we've got this big break and you are going to have any homework over the weekend. So I'm going to uh, hand out your verse mapping and then you can uh, we'll begin working on that. I haven't given you this, right? No. Oh, yeah. Uh, if we have time, you go over those. But I do want to. Um, next year. Uh, it's Bible twelve. Oh yeah, no, it's it's it. I just forgot to change that. Uh, 